Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use L'Hopital's rule on free response questions, which requires like a little bit of justification that you might not totally be used to. They first, I don't remember what year they put L'Hopital's uh, in the curriculum for Calc AB. It's been in BC for a really long time, um, but it's been on each of the last three released exams, the FRQs, so I think it's a really important concept. So we're gonna look at what to do. So first thing you need to know about L'Hopital's on FRQs is that you really need to deal with the limits of the numerator and the denominator separately. So it's not enough to just write the limit equals zero over zero. You're gonna deal with the limit of the numerator equals zero or infinity, I guess. The limit of the denominator is zero or infinity. Um, and then you'll move on from there. So the next thing is uh, you have to make sure that the limit is justified. So what I mean by this is um, kind of interesting because you don't run into these until you start doing FRQs all that much. Um, so if you know the function, you can just find the limit. So if you know that the function is x squared plus 2, just substitute in and you'll be fine. On the other hand, if you know about the function, so you know that f is a differentiable function um, and you know f of 3 is equal to 2 or something like that. Um, so if you just know about the function, you have to use a couple of ideas chained together. So differentiability implies continuity and then continuity means that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So in this scenario, you're probably going to know that the function is differentiable and you're probably going to know the value of the function. And so differentiability means continuity. Continuity means that the value of the limit is the value of the function. So that's what we're going to do in a couple of examples. And then uh, the third thing is actually use L'Hopital's rule. So make sure you're, you're writing the limits in there. Make sure you're showing what you're doing. Um, you, you pretty much always lose a point if you forget to write the limits, so make sure you do that. And then the other thing before we just do some examples, um, this only applies to the FRQs. When you're on the multiple choice problems, just do them kind of as fast and as accurately as you can and move on. You don't have to deal with all this justification stuff. I don't, I don't think anyone really forgets that, but I want you to know that I also know that you're not going to be doing this on the multiple choice. So let's take a look. So I'm going to go in a weird order here. So I'm making this in 2022, so I have 2018, 19, and 21 available. 2020 doesn't exist, so here goes. This one is 2018 number five, part D. I'm only gonna do the parts that are L'Hopital's. Um, and you can find these questions on the internet, and I've made video solutions to basically all of them. So here we go, this is part D. Let f be the function defined by f of x equals e to the x cosine of x. And then let g be a differentiable function such that g of pi over 2 is 0. So, right, g is differentiable, which means it's continuous, which means that the limit equals the value of the function. So we now know the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of g of x is equal to 0. But anyway, the graph of g prime, the derivative is shown. Find the value of the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of f of x over g of x, or state it doesn't exist. Justify your answer. All right, so we're going to go for it. we got to deal with... Uh, the numerator, the denominator, for some reason I did the denominator first because I got excited about g being differentiable. So anyway, um, g of x is differentiable. That was given. So because g of x is differentiable, we know that g of x is continuous. And it is given that g of pi over 2 is 0. So therefore, from all of that information, we definitely know that the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of g of x is 0. All right, so that deals with the denominator. Now for the numerator, we were given f of x is e to the x cosine of x, so we don't need to do all that justifying. We can just evaluate the limit. So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of f of x is e to the pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2. Since the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, that limit is 0. So that's the difference. If you have the function, just find the limit. If you know about the function, justify the limit. All right, so now we have the 0 in the numerator, 0 in the denominator, so we are justifying using L'Hopital's. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's. I'm going to say, therefore, by L'Hopital's, um, the limit is x approaches pi over 2. So I'm, state, I'm restating the original limit. Um, f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of f prime over g prime. So that's what you want to do. You want to link those ideas together. And now I need to uh, figure out f prime and g prime. So uh, f is, you know, a function, so I can actually find its derivative. It may be the case that you did this in a previous part. I didn't look at the previous parts when I was, like, coming up with a video idea. Um, so I found the derivative product rule, and then I find f prime of pi over 2 is negative e to the pi over 2. You just leave that. It's not going to get better than that. And also, uh, it's not 0, which is super important. So we're not going to get an, an indeterminate form here. We're going to get an answer. 
and then g prime we need to find um so we can fill this in g prime of pi over two that's this is actually the graph of g prime right so if we just look on the graph at pi over two we get two so that's our answer so this is a really good example this is from 2018 the next one I'm going to look at is from 2021. So I'm going in kind of a strange order, but for a reason. This one is also, I think, typical. So I'm, I'm expecting a problem like this one that we just looked at to become like a very typical problem that you'll be doing on FRQs. Um, all right. So this is number four, part C from 2021. It looks really similar. Um, and that's why I'm thinking this is going to become one of the standards. But let F be a continuous function defined on the interval negative four to six. The graph of F consisting of four line segments is shown above or to the side in my case. Let G be the function defined by G of X equals the integral from zero to X of F of T dt. All right, so it's an accumulation function. And then we need to find the limit as X approaches two of G of X over X squared minus two X. So X squared minus two X is a function that we know we can evaluate that limit by just subbing right in. Um, so we'll deal with that in a second. I wanna deal with the numerator. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna to need to establish some things. So we know about F and we know the definition of G. So I need to connect them somehow. Well, second fundamental theorem, G prime of X is equal to F of X. All right, so now that we have this, we can use the fact that F is continuous. So F is continuous, which means G is differentiable. And if G is differentiable, then G is continuous, right? So F is continuous, which means the derivative of G exists everywhere, which means that G is differentiable. I probably should have said negative four to six, but I feel like this problem just exists in that neighborhood. I don't know, maybe I should have said that. Um, so we know that G is continuous. As soon as we have that G is continuous, we can say that the limit as X approaches to of G of X is equal to G of two. And then also we can evaluate that. So that'll be the limit as X approaches two of G of X equals G of two, which is the integral from zero to two of F of T dt. You can look at the graph and work that out. That's gonna be zero because you have like a triangle above the x-axis, a triangle below the x-axis, equal areas, they cancel. Um, so we dealt with the numerator, now the denominator. The limit as x approaches two of x squared minus two x is equal to zero. So, so far in the examples that we have, they pretty much, one of them will be a function and one of them will be something you know about. Um, so you kind of get used to doing this. Now we can just use L'Hopital's. Um, so by L'Hopital's, the limit as x approaches two of g of x over x squared minus two x is the limit as x approaches two of g prime of x over two x minus two. So I'm actually using L'Hopital's there. And now I just need the values. Um, do I have the values? I don't know. Uh, so, okay, the graph of f, g prime is f. So at x equals two, we know we're getting negative four. And then uh, if I just plug in two, I get two. So this limit is negative two, but it's really the work that I wanted you to see and think about and get used to. Um, so again, I'm gonna keep repeating this. If you know the function, just find the limit. If you know about the function, you have to justify the limit. Um, so the next one that I wanna look at is gonna be from 2019. It's number six C, and it's a weird question. Um, so. Functions f, g, and h are twice differentiable functions with g of two equals h of two equals four. So they're differentiable, which means they're continuous, which means their limits equal the values of their functions. Okay, that's good. Um, y equals four plus two thirds x minus two is tangent to both graphs. So we also, uh, therefore, both, it's tangent to, I'm sorry, g and h, which means we know g prime and we know h prime are both two thirds if we need that. I don't remember if we do in this particular problem. Um, all right, here's the question. The function h satisfies h of x equals x squared minus four over one minus the quantity f of x cubed. So this is like, we know about f, h of x. We don't actually know what h of x is because we don't really know what f of x is. So we're gonna have to justify some limits as we go. It's known that the limit as x approaches two of h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. This is weird. So it's like the reverse. We already know that either this limit initially gave us zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. Um, and then we're gonna use the limit as x approaches two of h of x to find f of two and f prime of two. And we wanna show the work. All right, so that's the question. Just reading and understanding the question is a little intimidating, which is why you want to do the FRQs to practice. 
Um, so first up, we're going to try to find f of 2 because h of x has f of x in it, and I think we can manage that. All right, so what to do? Well, think about it. You can use L'Hopital's on this thing. So either you get 0 over 0 or you get infinity over infinity. First step is to decide which of those you get. So since L'Hopital's can be used to evaluate the limit as x approaches to of h of x, and the numerator is a function, and we can evaluate that, right? The limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 is 0. That means that we know the limit of the denominator must also be 0 if you're allowed to use L'Hopital's. So limit as x approaches 2 of 1 minus f of x cubed is 0. That must mean that f of x is 1 as you approach 2, or rather f of x approaches 1 as x approaches 2. Um, so I think we know that. Limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to 1. All right, now I need to say why that is the value of f of 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact. Again, it's a lot, right? You're, you're given a lot of information in this problem. The functions f, g, and h are twice differentiable, so f is differentiable. Since f is differentiable, f is continuous, and if f is continuous, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is f of 2, which means that f of 2 is 1. And we're done with that. We found f of 2. We're probably going to need that in the next part, but I'm out of room, so I'm going to start a new kind of like page where I'm basically now going to find f prime of 2. So we figured out f of 2 is 1. This is, it's problematic sometimes in these problems when you need to know a part of an answer to get another part of an answer. And I feel like they usually try to avoid that, but this seems like an experimental question that they're like throwing out there to give people an idea of what they might ask in the future. Um, sometimes you run into that. All right, we're gonna look for F prime now. So we already um, have established some things. We know that H is differentiable um, and that's given. So we know it's continuous and therefore we actually do know the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x. So h is differentiable, h is therefore continuous, um, and we know therefore that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is h of 2, which is 4. So this idea has come up over and over again, right? And we're only doing three problems. I imagine uh, 10 years from now I will have done at least 10 more of these. Um, all right, so... I'm now going to apply L'Hopital's rule because I need to get f prime somehow because I'm trying to find f prime of 2. So L'Hopital seems like the way to go. So by L'Hopital's, the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over 1 minus f of x cubed is the limit as x approaches 2. So you got to put the limits. If you don't put the limits, you're like losing all the points. Like you've already, you have an in, improper linkage or something they call it. Um, so the derivative of the top is 2x. The derivative of the bottom by the chain rule is negative 3 f of x squared times f prime of x. All right, now, what are we going to do? We need to find f prime of 2. I think we should justify that f prime of 2 even exists, um, but let's see. So I'm going to say, since f prime is differentiable, which we know because f is twice differentiable, uh, since f prime is differentiable, f prime is continuous, and therefore we know the limit as x approaches 2 of f prime of x is f prime of 2. So that's important because we're finding a limit. So now I'm going to actually like go back to this L'Hopitalized thing and start evaluating it. So uh, the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x over negative 3 f of x squared f prime of x is plug in 2 in the numerator and then basically plug in 2 in the denominator as well. Um, so I get negative 3. F of 2, don't forget in the previous part, we found was 1. So I have 4 over negative 3 times 1 squared. F prime of 2 is what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to leave that. And then we know because h is continuous, the limit equals the value of the function. h of 2 is 4, so the limit is also 4. So this equals 4. And that means you can just solve this. It's, you know, it's an algebra thing. Um, F prime of 2 is negative 1 third. All right. So that was a lot, and maybe you would want to go back and rewatch uh, this one in particular. I would focus more, honestly, on the previous two problems because I think those are going to become the standard issue type of thing. But this one's good to know and good to really think about because it involves basically using the ideas of differentiability and continuity over and over again in addition to L'Hopital's rule to you know help you flesh out some of the ideas that you have. But anyway... Um, that's it. That's how you're going to use L'Hopital's on the free response questions, how you're going to do your justifications. I hope this was helpful and good luck.